from us in the truth that Christ makes known. We have faith and understanding through your promise, light alone. Holy Spirit, come console us, come as advocate to please. Loving Spirit from the Father, grant in Christ the help we need. Possess us you the love of three in one. Holy Spirit of the Father, Holy Spirit of the Son. A voice from heaven said, this is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now let us say the Collect for Purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning and um, welcome to our Sunday worship, dear my friends. Um, today is still a bit hot and muggy inside, but temperature-wise, I think it all have settled in a way. Warm welcome to you all. Um, this morning, we are going to learn um, the very famous um, the story that um, the Jesus mentioned. The first shall be the last, and last shall be the first. And through that story, I'm sure that we are going to learn how God sees us and then how important um, it is for us to learn and then try to imitate how God sees the world and us. And then sometimes we see the world with our own eyes, and then that is the moment when we make the judgment on everything that is wrong. So this morning, we ask the Lord to help us to see the world through the eyes of God. But before we go there, let us offer the prayer of penitence together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power most cheerfully in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, please be seated for the scripture readings. A reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verses 6 to 7. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to, put, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, light shines in the darkness for the upright. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. Alleluia. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice, for they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desires of the wicked will perish. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 1 to 16. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. 
through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what ye have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, would you please extend for the Gospel reading. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Now hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guest chose the places of honour, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then, in disgrace, you'd start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher, then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, please be seated. Well, personally, do you like a big church or the small church? Big church, if you like big church, raise your hands now. Big church. Like uh, going to the cathedral, for example. You know, big church and long church, okay? Well, put your hands down, please. And then raise your hands if you love, personally, I'm not talking about this church, but you may say, oh, I feel this is very small church, Father Tim. In that case, well, you win. But if you prefer to be in a very sort of tiny church, if you, that is what you like, raise your hands. Oh, that's good. Yeah, put your hands down. Now, I have to say that you are lucky and blessed 
because we are in a large church so that you can keep some distance. You can be away from me. Do you know why? We had an electric fault in the vicarage and then the fault is actually linked with hot water tank. So I knew that if you, what happened? If you just switch off that hot water tank, what may happen? The hot water inside will go down a bit warm and at the end it become cold. I can tell you that it took me three days to become the hot water in the vicarage become colder. That means there is no hot water in the vicarage. You may say that's not a problem, Father Taming. Oh yes it is, because that means that will make someone, not only me, but also including two at the moment who live in the vicarage, will make us feel very difficult to take a shower. So some distance away from me, you are lucky and blessed. But still, you may think now, okay, what if we come up there to receive the Blessed Sacrament? You cannot avoid that moment. So pray hard and then come up here as you are a miserable sinner. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> this morning, we heard a very short first reading. That's from Book of Proverbs. And then... That is very simple. When you come to the place of banquet, do not sit in the place of honor because someone most distinguished or the higher or wealthier than you, famous than you, will come and then you will be kicked out. Think about what is happening in, for example, in the Westminster Abbey, for example. Yeah. Think about the moment when we have a Queen Majesty, the Queen, visiting the Westminster Abbey with all the loyal families. All the royal family members are not coming at once. They will come into the chapel, into the Westminster Abbey in certain ways. Do you all know that, right? And then that is what we call the protocols. So, for example, if there's a Majesty Queen who will go and, and talk to her, one of the volunteers? No. We still say, oh, last shall be the first, the first shall be the last, but still that's not happening in the world. Who will go and then meet the queen? Oh, the dean. The dean will talk to Her Majesty the Queen. And following by order, they all have their counterpart. So that's what's happening. So if you sit in a wrong place, and if you decided to go and talk to the dean on that particular day, because you feel you are the last, so you shall be the first, and then probably the dean will say, okay, thank you very much, but I'm really sorry, I need to go and speak to Her Majesty the Queen. Possibly you will be left over. Like that. So that is what we call the protocols. That protocol was there 2,000 years ago in, in somewhere in Israel. Same. So even Book of Proverbs, even Jesus reused what has been written in their culture. So he just retold the story. If you go to a wedding banquet, do not sit in the highest place because someone more higher than you, more famous than you, more stronger than you, more distinguished than you, might come. And then in their case, and I'm really sorry because this seat is not for you. And then you will be moved, but you already see every seat is occupied, so you can't actually go in there, and you can't ask everybody to move down. You will be the end. So in order for you to avoid that, Mm, awkward situation is better it is wise for you to be seated at the lowest seat and then the wedding host will see that oh why are you sitting there come up and find someone oh you stand up ah but i always come up with this question okay following the jesus what jesus told me i sat in the lowest seat here and waiting for the host to come and save me. 
and then honor me something. But what if host never comes to me? <laughs> that's the reality, isn't it? But anyway, that's not the point. This morning, we need to think about how God sees the world. The important thing sometimes, it is not whether you become the first or the last. Even, we don't need to argue with this, okay, well, even Jesus himself accepted this is social hierarchy. What's the point of we actually trying to actually sell the kingdom value to others? No, no, no. We don't need to worry about that. But what we want to focus on today is the last part. Think about the whole setting, this banquet. I think it's really strange. Jesus and the Pharisees, they never working together because Pharisees never accepted Jesus. We know that. But leader, on one occasion, leader of Pharisees invited Jesus to his home. So the whole setting itself is very strange. We don't know whether Jesus, was with his disciples, was sitting in the high place or mid or low. We have no idea. But that strange setting, Jesus was telling this simple parable, which was well-known story to everybody because it is not the brand new story Jesus invented, is already in the book of Proverbs. Everybody knew that, what you were talking about. But at the end, at the end, this is what Jesus told to the host who invited Jesus to that particular leader of the Pharisees. He said, do not invite the people who are matching with you those who have more power, those who have strong power, socially well-known person, wealthy people, don't invite them, your wealthy relatives. Because if you do that, if you offer something good, they will repay you. What's wrong with that? If we keep doing that, that is, we create our own social group. That is what we believe. We are matching. We are socializing with a someone whom I believe that person is matching with me. That is not good. But instead, when you do the banquet, invite someone who cannot repay you. Therefore, you, strangely, will be repaid the day of resurrection as a righteous. So Jesus acknowledged his will, his act, the host act to invite him and regarded him, treated him not as a sinner, but as a righteous. But he was, Jesus was giving him some more advice so that he can be the better person. That is to help him to see the eyes of God. Think about our own lives. It is easy for us to find someone in a same level. Yeah, I know, you and I, we have the same wavelength. You and I, we have the same level of knowledge. Yes, I've got the degree, you've got the degree, we can talk. You've got some information, I know what you're talking about, yes. Oh, well, how many bedrooms do you have? Five? Okay, I do have five. Yeah, we can talk about it. How many bedrooms do you have? One and a half? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what is your car? Oh, lovely Mercedes-Benz. Okay, that's good. Well, mine too. That's good, we can talk about. What car do you have? Oh, I don't have a car. My car is very long and big. Oh, is it called a bus? Oh, I don't talk about That is how we see the world. If we see the world with our own eyes and with our own mind, that is the best way for us to be captured in a wrong place. But the way God sees us is different. God doesn't see us by the level of things that we have. God sees us same. 
Even when we say, oh, those who have nothing, we don't work, we don't play with them, we don't actually mingle with them. But that is the terrible mistake. Because they are the one, they are the one who will allow us to prove that we have something that we can share. If we have the mindset, if we have eyes of God, we will be able to see the world plainly. We will see each and every one of us fairly. We will treat everybody fairly. And if we do that, yes, of course, sometimes they have nothing to repay us. Yeah, that's true in this world. But on the day of resurrection, the beginning of the eternal life, God will repay us. How simple is that? So, dear my friends, this morning, let us remember one thing. We are the one who are called to be the follower of Jesus. The particular way that Jesus saw the world, that is how Father sees the world. And then that is the view that we have to learn. If we cannot imitate the way he sees the world, what's the point of we creating a group of whatever which will make us feel happy, but at the end, the God will raise us a big question on the last day. So today's parable, I believe we can think about so many different things. We can stretch this story in that way, in that way, and in that way. But one of the ways that we can use this parable is, as I said, the way God sees us. And then I pray that each and every one of us, we will be able to learn that particular way of seeing the world. And then we will be able to imitate God and then we may have to share what we are called to share with others. May God bless us and give us the wisdom so that we may have to open our hearts and open our eyes with the help of Holy Spirit. And that is, I believe, the best way to make our lovely synchronize with God's will. May God bless us all in our small effort when we make the effort to see the world through the eyes of God. Amen. And then again, I'm going to invite all of you, if you can, please stand up as we say the Nissan Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. And we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, and light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, he became incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we offer some prayers of intercessions. Heavenly Father, you are always ready to hear our prayers and give us more than we deserve. 
continue to pour down upon us the abundance of your grace. Forgive us when we are too afraid to trust in you and for the times when our gifts are taken for granted. O God, we pray for people in every kind of need. We pray today and remember the people of Ukraine as they reach the anniversary of the outbreak of war. Also this week, we pray for the parents of young Olivia, so tragically killed in her home, and also for the victims of any street crime. There is so much need, Lord, and so much pain. We pray for peace for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those that administer the faith here in the London Diocese, especially Father Taman here at St George's. We ask that they respond to their calling and be guided by your spirit. We pray you will grant them health, strength, wisdom, rest, support, and all the things they need to lead us with love and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of wisdom, we lift to you the schools and places of education in our community and especially at our own parish school as they prepare to return to school later this week to start the new year. Lord, there are so many different feelings being felt as this new term approaches. Anxiety, excitement, apprehension and many more. Help everyone, Lord, to be mindful of the thoughts and feelings of others as they navigate through the next few weeks. Be with staff, students and families alike. Reach out your hand and lead the way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the helpless, and especially for fam family and friends who may feel desperate and alone. We pray for all who are housebound and long for a visitor, for those who just need a friendly ear to find their comfort. We pray for those anxious and worried concerning the rising costs we are all facing at the present time and hope they feel the love and support of those around them here in our parish. In a moment of quiet, we name in our hearts those whom we know who are in need of our prayers. We remember today those who have asked especially for our prayers. Michael Shine, Barbara Baker, Derek Rich, Russell Trotman, Malachi Reed Gray, Alfie Springle, Paul Afonso, Miriam Williams, Cliff Ray, Cameron Che Williams, and Graham Louise. May they know your love and care for them and find all their needs met by your healing presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, be close to those who feel the pain of the loss of a loved one, whether recent or as each anniversary passes. Help us to support all those who mourn with our prayers, our words of comfort, and where we can with practical help as they struggle to come to terms with their loss. God of comfort, we bring before you all of those who have departed from this life. Recently, we remember the lives of Doug Fairhurst, Rosemary Turner, Maria Cambasha, and Paul Boyd. And we also remember those whose anniversaries occur this week. Ernest Dexter, Sheila Stevens, Ada Turvey, 
Reginald Banbury, Leonard Bristow, George Needham, Lucy Harnett, Lawrence Christian, Doris Webb, Albert Crouch, David Leader, Mark Lane, Doris Meeson, Ronald Cannon, Winifred Hammond, Helen Rainbird, Marjorie Cooper, and Donald Cole. May the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we know that you promise to hear us when we pray, rejoicing in the fellowship of St. George and all your saints. We commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Have you, if you can, would you please stand? We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now let us offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you things. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And so, Father, 
calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, Saint George, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Now, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Body of Christ, 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 Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Body of Christ, the Body of Christ, the Body of Christ. Body of Christ, the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
people have celebrated that one true sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. By our communion, keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we also say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to... St George's this morning. Um, if you please join us for tea and coffee afterwards um, and the the 100 Club draw for August will take place so um, good luck to everyone. Um, but before a few notices um, we have to say a big birthday which is today to Jean. Jean Benson is her birthday today so happy birthday Jean and I'm sure we can all sing if you, if, if, if you stand, Jean, can we sing together? Come on. Come on, Jean. Stand off. That's you. That's a Jean. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jean. Happy birthday to you. Twenty-one again. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, um, there's a couple of sort of um, notices that aren't on the sheet. One is um, you might have noticed there a bit, a bit of it on the sheet is the pink envelopes all in the uh, centre aisle and in the Lady Chapel. Um, it's just there for people who wish to um, fill out the pink envelope. The details are in, on the notice sheet and on the envelope um, to try and help with giving. Um, for the church. Um, we have pens on the two sidesman's tables at the back if you don't have one and on this front table here. Um, so if you want to join the service when you give the pink envelopes will be um, available there but also at the tables. Um, on September the 11th which is a couple of Sundays time is our annual, it's our church's birthday that day. We will sing happy birthday to St George's um, and also we have some it's more giving, but which is lovely for everyone. Um, at, the ta at the back of the church, there are two um, tables with two options, pink envelopes that say happy birthday, so the, the money will go towards, um, Father has spoken online about the altar propose to make that a bit more um, of an altar, working altar. And also there are some money jars 
and it says happy birthday to St George's. And if you've got any loose chains, uh, they're on the tables, please, please take one home. Any change would be lovely. And return on the 11th or um, after, because obviously we can use these um, money boxes again. So um, be, thank you very much. Um, as I say, we have the 100 Club afterwards, and uh, the, there's still the day, uh, pilgrimage to Walsingham, so read your news sheet, please. And also, um, there is going to be a readers and intercessors meeting, that's on the notice sheet, after Sunday on the 18th of September. And obviously, at the bottom, there's a few extra dates, men's breakfast, um, the information is on the sheet at the back of the church, and obviously our confirmation, which is not long, um, 2nd of October, and our family activity afternoon on the 29th. Sorry about the long notices there, but uh, it all comes at once, which keeps us busy, doesn't it? One more thing that I need to say on the top of what you said, um, right. Dave. Yeah. Confirmation. Um, the date of our confirmation classes for the grown-ups um, will be on the pew sheet and then on our website um, the next week. So um, keep an eye on that, and then you're most welcome to, um, to join us. But if you, if you already confirmed, but if you want to actually join us because of the concept or the talking, what we're going to do is quite, you know, sounds interesting, you are most welcome. Um, you know, feel free to um, pop in. Um, you don't need to, you know, dedicate yourself for all three or four um, the sessions, but, yeah, you know, to make the most of it. And also, um, one, one more thing, I'm sorry, because, um, Last, next Sunday is the first Sunday in September. We normally produce, um, you know, a parish magazine um, on our first Sunday. That's what we're aiming for. But um, that's not going to happen. And our September parish magazine will be published on, the pos possibly, on the second the Sunday. That's purely because of the clash of my... Um, you know, the, my personal diary, family time, holiday, away, annual leave. You, you know what I'm talking about. So um, please keep praying for me so that I can be refreshed in the vicarage and that I may have to finish, you know, everything that I need to do on time. But Parish Magazine-wise, and then that will be published on our second Sunday. That's, that's our target. So if you don't see the Parish Magazine next Sunday, don't begin to cry or to complain, it will follow on the first Sunday, the following Sunday, okay? Apart from that, I hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Would you all please stand, um, if you can, for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Now the Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Now we're going to sing our final hymn, hymn number 153. Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Keep me praising till the end of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me peace in my heart, give me resting. Give me peace in my heart, I pray. Give me peace in my heart, give me resting. Give me resting till the end of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing 
Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me love in my heart, give me serving. Give me love in my heart, I pray. Give me love in my heart, give me serving. Keep me serving till the end of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. The oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me Oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, give me burning. Give me burning till the end of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. See Hosanna to the King.